Hi everybody, my name is Kim and welcome to my channel, Bookmarks and Breadsticks. If you're new to my channel, a special hello. My channel focuses on food writing. This can be anything from your favorite chef memoir to food history, like the origins of corn. So in this video, I am here to show you my giant book haul for the month of June. I have 27 books to go through today, plus a couple more that are still shipping and on back order. So throughout this video, I will break up books by the bookstore that I purchased these books from or my friends did. So a good portion of these books are actually gifts from friends and colleagues. I left a job at the end of May and it's a real testament to how well my friends and coworkers know me after two years because instead of sending me flowers or chocolates or something, they bought me books. So the first pile of books I'm going to go through are from Book Outlet. Now, if you haven't been aware in the recent weeks, a lot of really disappointing and nasty information has come out about bookoutlet.com and the way they were treating their I think they're like their reviewing community. They only had one black booktuber or black affiliate working with them. And when pressed on why, they said that they wanted to keep their channel family friendly. That is a load of crap. I already have these books. I'm not going to be returning them. Um, so a little less focus on where I got these books from, but I am still really excited to read them. I will not be working with them. I will not be giving them my business ever again at all. So on the list of people that I don't support and buy books from, that would be Amazon and now bookoutlet.com. So the first book I'm going to talk about is First Bite by B. Wilson. This is the second book I own by B. Wilson. I'm currently reading her other book, Consider the Fork. So in First Bite, Wilf Wilson offers a manifesto for better ways for eating for both adults and kids. She draws on the latest research from food psychologists, neuroscientists, and nutritionists to reveal that our food habits are shaped by a whole host of factors, family and culture, memory and gender, hunger and love. I'm really excited to read. She is a writer based in the United Kingdom and it's kind of nice to think about food and diet from a point of view other than the United States. The United States is a fairly young country and we are very cyclical. We, our diets as a nation change with every new fad. And uh, what I like about the perspective of B. Wilson is that this is someone who's based in Europe, a country, country, a continent that has a lot more history. So I'm very excited to see how these anthropology based impacts really drive and influence how we eat. Okay, next book is Steak by Mark Schatzker. One man's search for the world's tastiest piece of beef. Hopefully I said that right. So this is Steak steak nothing that humans have ever put into their mouths in in the name of nourishment has been subject to such devotion such such flights of gastronomic ecstasy or such grave connoisseurship of this most adored of meats steak so in this book mark is going to be traveling the world to understand He's going to take readers on an odyssey to four continents across thousands of miles and through hundreds of variations, hundreds of various cuts of steak prepared in dozens of different ways, all in the quest for the perfect piece. So next up is Finding the Flavors We Lost by Patrick Koo. This Patrick is a, the Los Angeles Magazine's award-winning restaurant critic. So when you hear the word artisanal, we hear it all the time. It's usually attached to cheese, chocolate, coffee, and more. But what does that actually mean? We take farm to table and handcrafted catering for granted, but how did we get there? And I think that's really true. I mean, how often do we hear about like crafted cocktails, artisan beers. Well, where did the buzzword come from? Like, how did we get there and why does it matter? It does seem that this book is going to focus on America. You guys, let me know out there if this craft artisanal movement happens beyond the United States. And I'm excited to see if this is more than just a marketing buzzword. I have to keep piling them up. Okay, next up is Champagne Uncorked. 
the house of Krug, and the timeless allure of the world's most celebrated drink by Alan Tardy. The epitome of effervescence and centerpiece of celebration, champagne has become a universal emblem of good fortune and few can resist its sparkle. I have watched a few documentaries about wine, specifically about champagne. I think you can still watch one about champagne on Netflix if you're more into movies than you are reading about the history of wine, but I'm really excited to get another perspective. It's considered food, wine, and history, and it has some really nice uh, quotes on the back and like re uh, really what I'm really excited to learn more about the wine and champagne world. Champagne specifically is designated only to the area of champagne in France, so it has a standard of identification that um, if you make a claim that you're making champagne outside of the region of Champagne, you are held accountable to really hefty fines by the French government. I think this is super cool and I'm excited to learn more about it. So next up is Eating Korea by Graham Holiday. This is actually his second book. Um, in this one, it's a love letter of delights of Korean cuisine, and it's all about how he tours this country. I was also really excited because Anthony Bourdain does give a quote, may he rest in peace, on the back. Graham Holiday's enthusiastic and exciting follow-up to his brilliant Eating Vietnam is the perfect outsider's perspective on a country whose culinary and cultural influence grows with every passing day. Embrace the future. So I didn't know this when I picked up the book, but Eating Vietnam is his first book. So while I do have this copy, this is probably gonna sit on my to, to be read, my TBR shelf for a little while because I am one of those people that even if the books are not sequels, I wanna read his first book more and in order just to see how style and evolution evolves. All right, next book is by Edward Bear, The Food and Wine of France. It's just like it sounds like. It's the food and wine of France. I have been to France. I went to Paris when I was 20 in college in my undergrad with my best friend. And I loved the city, but I definitely wasn't as adventurous in my culinary exploration as I am now. So I would love to go back. I did try escargot. It was fine. Uh, nothing to complain about, but I'm excited to see more of this. It's a little bit of an older book, um, but it does have glowing endorsements from Rene Redzepi, Danny Meyer. Danny Meyer owns a ton of restaurants. Rene Redzepi is the co-owner of Noma, which has been rated the best restaurant in the world many times. Dan Barber from Blue Hill at Stone Barns and the Los Angeles Times and the Wall Street Journal. Final book from the bookstore we shall no longer name, Famous Nathan and this is all about the history of Nathan's hot dogs. I don't need to say any more than that. I love food history, but I also love niche food history. Things that are so iconic and classic, I want to know more about it. Like they're still having the Nathan's hot dog eating contest on Coney Island this year, but the contestants are only in groups of five, five males, five females. Like people are so obsessed with these Nathan hot dogs that they wouldn't cancel the hot dog eating contest on the 4th of July, despite the fact we're in a global pandemic. So I'm super excited to learn more. Okay, moving on to our second retailer. The next seven books are from bookshop.org. If you guys aren't aware or familiar with Bookshop, bookshop.org works on a model where a percentage of all your purchases do go to support independent bookstores. I am so much happier giving my money to that organization because every time you check out, you get a little note at the bottom for each book you buy that says X amount of dollars went to support a local bookstore. Also, some of your local bookstores in the neighborhood you live in, they might still be closed because of the pandemic, but they might have a membership with bookshop.org. So you can go online and use their search engine and find the bookstore. And when you make a purchase, that contribution will go straight to that bookstore's account. So I think this is a great model. They are pretty fast in their turnaround despite us being in a pandemic. So I would highly recommend them. Don't go to amazon.com, don't go to don't go to book outlet, go to bookshop.org. And if you're worried about having, you know, your affiliate or your wish list, you can make lists yourself on bookshop.org. And you can still get a commission if that's important to your model and you still have proceeds going to 
that bookshop. So it doesn't have to be one or the other. It doesn't have to be you or the bookshop. Both of them will benefit in this model, which is super exciting. Okay, let's get into the books. The first thing I bought is not a reading book. It's um, a reader's journal, bibliophile. I saw a couple other booktubers who had nice little books and ways to keep notes on every book that they're reading. And I thought this was a great idea. Now I'm not reading 30 books in a month. I'm lucky if I can get through five, but I do, I grew up journaling and I love the idea of keeping notes and uh, mentioning maybe the, my favorite quotes or what stuck out to me. I'm not someone who likes tagging my books. I like them to stay pristine. So this is a really great option. Next book is Serve It Forth by MFK Fisher. I just realized I'm casting a shadow on myself. MFK Fisher is a very influential food writer. Um, she was alive from 1908 to 1992 and she's an author of numerous books and essays and they're all considered American classics in food writing. So Serve It Forth is, I don't think is her first book as I cheat and look through my piles. Um, I had another book by MFK Fisher. No, this is her first book. So this is the first of many and I really wanted to read her books in order because she writes from her personal experience. It's not really a memoir like I did this or this adventure, but it is her musing. So Serve It Forth, her first book, duh, it says it right there. In Serve It Forth, her first book, MFK Fisher takes readers on an animated journey through the culinary history, beginning with the honey-loving Greeks and the immoderate Romans. So this is definitely food history. I think MFK Fisher, as she gets along in some of her later books, she does get a little bit more personal, adds a little bit more of her life, especially ones that involve her sister, but this is food history, and she is considered American classics when it comes to food writing. The next book is Arbitrary Stupid Goal. Um, this is one of the New Yorker's books we love. Arbitrary Stupid Goal is a completely riveting world. When I looked up from its pages, regular life seemed boring and safe and modern like one big iPhone. This book captures not just a lost New York, but a whole lost way of life. So Tamara Shopskin, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Tamara takes the reader on a pointillistic time travel trip to the Greenwich Village of her bohemian 1970s childhood, a funky, tight-knit, small town in the big city, long before Sex in the City tours and luxury condos. In the center of Tamara's universe is Shopskins, her, fa her family's legendary greasy spoon, aka the store, run by her inimitable dad, Kenny, a loquacious, contrary, huge-hearted man who, aside from dishing up New York's best egg salad on rye, is village sheriff, philosopher, and fixer all at once. All comers find a place at Shopskin's table and feast on Kenny's tall tales and trenchant advice, along with the incomparable chili con carne. So this is definitely a food memoir. I love food memoirs that are from the point of view of a woman growing up in a family environment, in a family cooking environment. I have always had dreams of a greasy spoon diner. I sometimes think of just you know, giving up a life of food marketing and working in big consumer goods and just opening a little greasy diner in the middle of nowhere. I also, how fun and lovely is this cover? I'm super, super excited to see what her voice is. This one came highly recommended on a couple of lists from both Eater and Bon Appetit of best memoirs of like X year to read. Okay, the next book, which I did mention in my mid-year freakout tag, is The Enlightenment of the Greenage Tree by Shokef Azar. It was shortlisted for the Stellar Prize. So this is a book that has nothing to do with food, but it is a book that was written in Farsi, which is the native language of Iran, which is where my dad is from. So it is a journey. It, it does have a female protagonist, but Honestly, internationally nominated book written by a Persian author that was then translated to English. I picked up a copy, I sent a copy to my dad down in New York, and I'm hoping that we can read this one together. So this is Brooklyn in Love. It is one of the first books I got from co a coworker when I left my old job. On an island where finding love can be just as hard as finding a dinner reservation on a Friday night, Amy Thomas never imagined a family would fit into her independent lifestyle. So when Amy finds herself turning 40, moving to Brooklyn, and making way for a baby with a new man in her life, she realizes that starting over may be her biggest opportunity yet. She does have another book called Paris My Sweet. I haven't read that book either, so I got this one out of order, but again, it's a gift from a friend, so I'm very excited to have it on my shelf. 
The next two books are actually young adult fiction and they came from a former co-worker of mine. The Way You Make Me Feel by Maureen Gu. I actually already have finished reading this and will have a book review for this up next week, hopefully. Um, this one is a really, really fun read. And then another young adult book that I need to read is Love and Luck. So Love and Luck is by Jenna Evans Welch. She's the author of Love and Gelato, and I believe Love and Olives has also come out now. I think that new book just came out this year. And Love and, I was originally looking for Love and Gelato because it made me think of who doesn't love young adult and then who doesn't love food? So I believe this one came first. I might be wrong, but I'm excited to read this book, see if I like it. And it's a nice break from reading really heavy hitting food history to just kind of pick up something nice and light and really fall in love with characters and fiction. Okay. Whew. Two stores down, two to go. Now we've moved from large online retailers to local bookstores here in Chicago. So the first bookstore I'm going to talk about is Bookseller, an independent bookstore in Chicago. The next one, two, three, four, five books are also gifts from colleagues. When I left, they gave me a gift card and said, you have so many books on your wish list. We didn't know where to start. So just pick the books you want. And I went, okay, that sounds good to me. So the first book is The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan. This book, um, I've seen it around on book two before. I love books about bookstores. I know this one's got eh, some mixed reviews out there. So I'm interested to see, am I the one person who's gonna love this book? What does that say about my taste? But again, it's nice to have another not food book on the shelf. Next book is Butter, A Rich History by Elaine Korsova. I hope I said that right. Really blank, stark cover, but I love it. And it is food history. It's a culinary catalyst, an agent of change, a gastronomic rock star. From its accidental invention in a long ago herder's pouch to its ubiquitous presence in the world's most fabulous cuisines, butter is the boss. Next book is Shark Fins and Sichuan Peppers, a sweet and sour memoir of eating in China by Fuchsia Dunlop. This also has a new forward by B. Wilson from earlier in the video. So that's kind of awesome when a writer that you know and you like endorses another writer. Um, she, Fuchsia Dunlop, is the author of four Chinese cookbooks, including The Food of Sichuan. She speaks, reads, and writes in Chinese, but lives in London. So that's pretty cool. Um, Fuchsia Dunlop, the first Westerner to train at the prestigious Sichuan Institute of Higher Cuisine, has done more to explain real Chinese cooking to non-Chinese cooks than anyone. So, oh, he realized that was in the shadow, sorry. So I'm actually really excited to read this one. Um, I believe one of her books, one of her cookbooks was nominated for a James Beard Award. So I always love when an author actually does both and has cookbooks and some kind of food memoir or food writing, because then I can get to know the person on a superhuman level. And then if I'm really passionate, I might actually pick up a cookbook. Okay, next one, super tiny, nice and cute, really like it. Corn, A Global History by Michael Owens Jones. It is part of the Edible series, which I need to find out what this series is, because I'm guessing that means that there's other food history books like this in the series. Uh, not much more to say other than it's an entire little book about corn. So this is Save the Deli by David Sachs. David Sachs is the writer of Provence 1970, which is a book I mentioned in my May book haul, which I'll link below that was up, a link above. So like I've mentioned before, if I read a book by an author and find out that author has other books, I'm really excited to read the whole bibliography. So Save the Deli is all about saving the iconic Jewish deli. You know, that beyond something like the iconic Cat's Deli in New York City, it's the idea of succulent corned beef, peppery pastrami, lighter than air matzo balls, chewy, crispy, crusted rye. It's a book about deli, delis, delicacies, history, and characters, and the greatest triumphs, spectacular fa failures, and the hope of its very future. And what I like about this is David Sachs is not just going to hang out in New York talking about Jewish delis. He's going to go to Chicago, Florida, Los Angeles, Montreal, Toronto, and Paris. And I think that's kind of interesting. What does a Parisian think about an iconic American Jewish deli? I really enjoyed his tone in Provence 1970, so I definitely think I will like this book as well. Okay, final 
bookstore. We only have one, two, three, four, five, six books to go. So this is another bookstore that I have mentioned in previous videos. This is Open Books. So Open Books is actually a nonprofit that sells used books. All the funds and all the purchases for the books that you make go right back into the nonprofit to create writing programs, reading programs, and other mentorship programs. You can volunteer your time there, and you can also just volunteer if you want to work the stacks and like pretend you work at a library or etc. This nonprofit has been open during all of COVID or during all of shelter in place in Chicago for curbside pickup. So I've been walking, you know, the mile and a half to the bookstore. I would go up and safely pick up my book off the table and then just walk all the way home. And this past weekend was the first time I could go in the bookstore, which was really exciting. I donated 30, 30 books off of my bookshelf. And I'm not someone who usually likes to give away books, but these were all business books from when I was getting my MBA in 2014, 2015. And while I felt really smart and fancy having them, they were books I was never gonna read again. So if I can donate these books that I had to pay full price for and give someone a chance to buy them for four, five, six dollars, I was more than happy to. So a couple of books from them, and then we are done with the haul for June, it's June. So Serializing America, this is just what it sounds like. It's all about the cereals that we grew up with and how they came to be in America. This is a hardcover, beautiful book and the best surprise ever. I hope it shows up and it focuses, but it's actually autographed, which is one of those great things about when you buy used books, you never quite know what you're getting. It also has one of those covers on it that makes me think this used to belong to like a public library or something. I don't know how else to explain it other than it has a plastic sleeve around it. And it just looks like a library book in a way that I find charming. Okay, next up is The Primal Cheeseburger by Elizabeth Rosen. So this is food history, all about the cheeseburger. It's really small, only about 200 pages. So I think this is gonna be a great, quick little read for when I just need to have some downtime. So the next book is The Secret Life of the Lobster. I find with food writing, you often will uh, blur the line with nonfiction that's environmental nonfiction. Sometimes you even get into science. And I think The Life of the Lobster is gonna be one of those books. It's probably less about cuisine and more about um, animal studies, but I'm okay with that. Sometimes it's nice to diversify. Um, I love the reviews on the back. The, invest the investigation into society, science, and sustainability leaves a complex, satisfying taste in your mouth. Another book that's been on my list of books to buy and finally got into my hands is The United States of Arugula. It's an IACP award finalist. With a sweep of an epic novel, David Camp takes us on takes us behind the scenes into the sweaty, wacky, weird trenches of the great American food revolution. His reporting is solid, his storytelling magnificent, and his good humor is seemingly inexhaustible. A terrific book. I love food history, but if you can give me a writer who also has a sense of humor, that makes it even better. This is also a book that my friend who works in the hospitality industry, she actually works for Disney in Florida, she read this book, and if one of my friends gets a book even remotely close to the things I'm passionate about, I always want to pick it up so that I can read it and we can also have something fun to talk about. Sour Heart by Jenny Zhang. This is a debut novel from the author. I think this came out in 2018. A fresh new voice emerges with the arrival of Sour Heart, Jenny Zhang's frank and subversive debut that snatches the wig right off the immigrant native narrative in America. In this linked collection, she conjures the disturbing and often hilarious experience of adolescence through the eyes of Chinese-American girls growing up in New York City. I love books like this because I am only going to lead my life. I'm only going to live one life, but I love stories where I can learn and lead someone else's for a little bit. I'm, I was born here in America, but I love hearing stories about my dad, how he came to America and what it was like to be an immigrant, so I love fiction books like this as well and it's somewhere in the pile. I'm actually pretty proud. This is, I got a lot more fiction this month than I almost have the entire year. Final book is by Paul Greenberg called The American Catch, and it's focusing on American seafood, sustainability, and the risks that we are enduring as a country. He is also the author of Four Fish. I haven't picked that book up yet, so I think I'm reading out of order, meaning that this is a more recent publication than Four Fish but I enjoy reading Brent Smith's book, 
eat like a fish about food sustainability. He focused more on seaweed and etc. So I wanted to keep that trend going because I found that book really enjoyable. So I'm really hoping I love American Catch as well. Okay, those are all the physical books that I have with me today. There are still a couple that are on the way. For part of Blackout Publication, where we, it was through June 20th that we were encouraged to purchase books by black authors to help black out the bestsellers list for books, I purchased Hog and Hominy, Soul Food from Africa to America, and I also purchased Franchise, The Golden Arches in Black America. So two different books about Southern cuisine or the influence of cuisine in America. I also have, it's on back order, but I am listening to the audiobook The Cooking Gene. That is another look at Southern cuisine. This is through the eyes of Michael Twitty, and he is a descendant of slaves. It will be a great companion that I want to compare it to The Pot Liquor Papers, which is a review I did a little bit earlier this month. That was a book that focused on the cuisine and the history of the modern South, but it is written from, the author is white. So I, I did want to do a nice compare and contrast. Fourth book that is on the way, I actually think it's available for pickup at Open Books that I need to go get in the next couple of days, is How to Be an Anti-Racist by Kendi Ibrim. I hope I pronounced that right. If not, let me know below. So I still have four more books on the way, and that brings our total haul of the month to 27 books. Whew. That was a lot to get through. Man, I need a minute. So I don't think I'll be doing a lot of book purchasing through the rest of this year. I have a lot of books clearly I need to get through. I do have a couple pre-orders, but other than that, this is gonna last me through the year. I still had 20 other books on my original TBR, and now I have to see if I can get through 47 by the end of the year. 47 books was my goal for the whole year. I'm on book 38 now, so I do think I can make a solid dent, and I'm pretty excited about it. So that's my haul for the month of June. I will link below the retailers that I discussed minus the one we shall not talk about. And I will also link to my currently reading list through Bookshop. That way I don't have to list out every single individual book uh, with a hyperlink. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this video. Boy, I am tired. That is long. Have a great day, everyone, and happy reading.